unless you just returned after a six month rehab stint at a wellness retreat on a remote island with no internet, TV or radio, you will have heard about ChatGPT. Those of us who remember trying Google search for the first time after being stuck with Alta Vista will probably agree that there are similarities in how transformative this new technology feels. YouTube's bursting at the seams with videos promising get-rich-quick schemes, trading bots, generative art side hustles, and dodgy Instagram bot ideas, all created by the magical chat GPT. And so, given that you've already clicked on this video, you're probably wondering if that means I'm shamelessly jumping on the old chat GPT bandwagon in a needy attempt to boost my views. You better fucking believe it. The creators of ChatGPT, OpenAI, have now that we've all had a wee dab from the baggie of heroin, started a paid-for tier. This was always inevitable. Nothing this good stays free for long. Surely you all knew it was inevitable, right? But until they do pull down the shutters on the free version, there's some mileage to be had from the career-destroying generative miracle that is ChatGPT. And this being a photography channel and not one about Fortnite or facial cleansing routines, I've been thinking about ways of using ChatGPT to make my life as a photographer simpler. Yes, I put on my thinking cap and thought about how I could use ChatGPT to take some of the grift out of the everyday common or garden photographer's thug life. And after several large coffees and three trips to the bog, I've come up with 10 solid use cases for you to try yourself. There are few things in life as awful as having to write an enthusiastic sounding Instagram or Facebook caption for your latest photograph. So don't skip the torture. Just give ChatGPT the basic information, the type of photo, location, time of day, and any other pertinent details. Set it a word count let it rip. The resulting captions might be cheesier than a warm camembert left in the sun on a 30 celsius day, but since when has social media been known for its originality? Embrace the cheese. Your captions probably aren't going to be read by other bots anyway, so let's just skip the middleman and let these fucking AIs chat between themselves for once. If you're visiting an area for the first time and you're not sure what the best photographic locations are, don't endure the local tourism organization's promotional website. Just get ChatGPT to give you the lowdown. I asked it to pick locations in my local council region, the Shoalhaven, that I could visit within the space of a weekend. And this is what it came up with. These are actually really solid picks, not a duff choice amongst them. If I was being pedantic, I'd say that Jervis Bay and Buddery National Park are pretty much a single pick, but other than that, it's great information. Sure as shit beats interpreting the hushy marketing speak on a travel site, that's for sure. So let's say you fancy following GPT suggestions and visiting these locations. What would an itinerary for such a trip look like? Yes, something like this. Once you have your suggestions, you can get ChatGPT to convert it all into a simple running order. As impressed as I was by this response, I did notice one big issue, however, namely, the itinerary isn't based on logical geographic steps according to the distances between those locations. So, on day two, it had me visiting the Minamura Rainforest, right at the very north of this region, and then Pigeon House Mountain, which is in the south. So I asked it to try again, this time minimizing driving time. Did a bit better, but still had that big trip north to south on day two. Pretty sure I could have got it to finesse this by wording my query differently, but what can I tell you? I've got ADHD and I got bored and moved on to the next use case. <music> so 
some people have knowledgeable friends who they cross-examine when they need solid info on a new lens camera or filter system or whatever. But what if your mates only know about Aston Villa's passing performance or the best turbo for an Audi Q5? Mm. It's obviously the KO4 turbocharge from CTS, incidentally, but that's not the point. Who's going to help you with those thorny photography-related questions? Mm. I asked ChatGPT for a lens recommendation for studio portrait work, and I asked it to explain why. I've got a wife who controls the finances with a Cosa Nostra-like grip, and I need to show her my working out for such a substantial purchase. I know absolutely fuck all about studio portraits, and so when GPT suggested the XF56 F1.2, I googled it and found out that it's a rock-solid suggestion. When I checked, pretty much every photography site gave props to the XF56, all agreed that it's a brilliant choice of lens for portrait work because the mirrorless X-T4 makes that 56mm effectively an 85 which is apparently the ideal focal length for these types of photos. So then I tested GPT on a kind of photography I do know a little bit about, which is astrophotography. And yet again, it came up with the goods, picking the Fuji Astro Shooter's favorite, the XF16F 2.8. I did wonder, however, what the best way of taking a studio portrait, such as a corporate headshot might be. I mean, most of those corporate headshots look like they were taken in a 1974 era photo booth, but I'm assuming there's a little bit more to it than that. Turns out there is. I've got some great tips there, particularly in terms of lighting. Know also that there are tips that you can give to the person you're photographing, such as wearing neutral colors, avoiding busy patterns, and resisting the urge to embrace crystal meth just to make it through another day in your cubicle. Traditionally, I just use the excellent photo pills to look up the hyperfocal distance for a lens and aperture on my X-T4, but I decided to see if the numbers tallied with chat GPT. For my XF 35mm lens at f8, photo pills reckons that hyperfocal distance is 16 meters, while chat GPT came up with a figure of 14 and a half meters. They're pretty close, and I suppose the discrepancy might be due to the limited lens knowledge of either photo pills or chat GPT, but since this is all calculated by a formula, I was confused as to why the numbers were different. So just to double check, I cross-referenced it all with the Wolfram Alpha computational intelligence engine. And just because all these AIs decided to fuck with me today, Wolfram came up with an entirely different figure of 12.5 meters. So I have a rough idea what distance to focus that lens at to have it sharp to infinity. Our generative machine learning overlords have decided that I should never know the real figure in case it fractures the space-time continuum or something. you have an idea for processing an image, you often end up disappearing down a rabbit hole of YouTube videos, all offering maddeningly different solutions. So I thought ChatGPT could bypass all that hassle and give me one single reliable answer to a tricky technical question. By way of a test, I asked GPT how to convert a landscape photo to black and white in Photoshop CC. The solution it came up with is a solid one. Personally speaking, I use a gradient adjustment layer instead of the black and white one, but they both work well. I thought it was interesting that GPT went above and beyond with the reply, suggesting that I could use a selective color adjustment layer to tweak the image. If this AI ever sets up its own YouTube channel, we're all fucked. I'm one of those people who tends to find out about the appearance of some hyper-massive supermoon about five bloody minutes before it's supposed to happen. So for this test of ChatGPT, I asked it to help me out with a full moon shot. Giving GPT location information, it suggested that November the 14th was a great day and I should position myself in the Botanic Garden or Circular Key. Awesome! Thanks, ChatGPT. Unfortunately, 
This answer is so wrong, I have to assume ChatGPT is making an elaborate nerdy joke at this photographer's expense. If we take a look at the photo pills moon information for November 14th, we can see that not only is there no full moon on that day, but there's only 0.1% of the moon showing. It's quite literally the worst day of the month to photograph the moon. Also, the choice of location has to be a piss take. You can't photograph the full moon over the Sydney Opera House from the Botanic Gardens because you're facing literally 180 degrees in the wrong bloody direction. And the correct answer, in case you're wondering, is the overseas passenger terminal. But I'd suggest going on the 27th when there is a full moon and not the 14th of November. And then I thought to myself, even though GPT totally fucked up that last question, what other cool natural events are taking place in 2023? GPT struggled a bit with this one. Maybe it's losing the will to live after being asked to write essays about Keynesian economics for unmotivated students and to reword the resumes of people whose main experience is in shelf filling and casual online sex work. In any case, answers one and two are great, but three and four are so vague and apathetic, they brought to mind the prose produced by a 10-year-old school child tasked with writing a 500-word essay with the title, What I Did in My Summer Holidays. If you're an event photographer, then you'll know that you often require a release form from people you photograph. Being a cheap bastard, I asked ChatGPT to write me one based on the law here in Australia, and it did a pretty nice job, I guess. I'm no lawyer, but the language certainly seems to cover all the legal eventualities and directly references the privacy law that the person signing the form is agreeing to opt out of. was pondering what other photographic related problems ChatGPT might be able to help me with, I suddenly thought of those times I get hassled when I'm out flying me drone. So I asked ChatGPT to make me a fuck off and leave me alone information sheet that I can hand out to Karens and Kevins when they decide that it's their civic duty to inform me that I cannot photograph someone who's in public with my drone. I'd certainly rewrite this document that GPT came up with, but it's a pretty good starting point. Obviously, I'll put now kindly piss off and stick a large root vegetable up your ass at the end of that document, but other than that, it's pretty good. So there you go, guys, 10 ways of using ChatGPT to make a photographer's life a little bit easier. Some obviously um, more useful than others. Have you joined the throngs around the world rejoicing in the liberation that ChatGPT offers or are you a copywriter now considering retraining as a short order cook? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please flick it a like and consider subscribing for more generalized photography and drone related bollocks in your YouTube feed. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.